came across Echo Custom Drums at the London Drum Show and it was a good friend of mine, Lee Mullen, who uh, is a fabulous percussion player. He came over to me and said, hey, have you checked these guys out? They're not far, they're, they're based not far from where, you, where your parents live. And he said, come and check out, they make custom drums. So I was like, oh, okay, that sounds interesting. As we were walking over to the stall, he said, uh, oh, by the way, all the drums they make are metal. I said, oh, yeah, like snare drums, metal snare drums. He said, no, no, everything, bass drums, tom-toms. And I was like, whoa, 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 hang on, hang on. That's not going to sound nice, is it? He said, oh, no, he said, come and check them out. Just come and check them out. And when I got round there, I think they had two, two kits set up. They had the uh, Apollo 1 kit set up, I think, which is an aluminium kit. And they, they had another, an 18-inch kit, which I think think was I think it was a copper kit uh, with an 18 inch tom 12 and a 14 I think the uh, the Apollo kit was 22 as I recall 10 12 14 16 and I was blown away from the moment I sat at the drums um, I couldn't believe I was playing metal drums it, it was it was weird I mean I expected the snare drums to sound I mean they looked great so I thought well they're gonna sound great and they did but the the real shock to me was how good the bass drum and the tom tom sounded I thought it was some sort of trick going on but that was, that was my first encounter and I immediately um, introduced myself to Dave Quinn and his son Dave Jr. And struck up a very good uh, relationship with them straight away because they're northerners like me. So uh, it was a really good... Yeah, well, after that, I uh, came down to the factory in Staley Bridge. First of all, a real warmth to, um, to their attitude, to, um, to meeting me, made me feel very welcome. I'm not the kind of drummer that knows too much about the ins and outs of how drums are constructed. Um, I'm not really a gear freak, um, although I like collecting lots of different gear and to me if it sounds great then I, then I like it. I've never really sort of delved into what makes it sound great. It's all a bit, I'm a bit of a technophobe really, it all kind of goes over my head. Typical drummer really I guess. Dave Quinn was, was really welcoming, explained to me how their drums were made, what his background was and we talked in depth about getting a kit uh, set up for me that uh, would suit a gig that I had um, starting which was in a jazz club in London where I was going to be uh, the house drummer and I wanted uh, a very typical jazz set up an 18 uh, bass drum, a 12 inch and a 14 inch floor tom, a few snare drums uh, to choose from. And uh, we looked at some of the options. Uh, he didn't make me feel stupid that I knew nothing about what he was talking about initially. And uh, they couldn't do enough for me really, uh, both Dave and uh, Dave Quinn and, and his son. Whatever ludicrous idea I came up with, they, they, they knew a way around it and, and basically created the, the kit you see in front of you now, which, uh, which was all kind of as per my my spec. The kit they first made for me is this one you see here which is um, an 18 by 18 I think bass drum, aluminium, um, 14 by 14 floor tom and a 12 by 8 rack tom. I don't know too much about the ins and outs of it and I know that it sounds great. Yeah the, uh, the, the, the bass drum has, uh, has got, they do this great thing, the kick port, they put one of these in there and it just made, I mean this bass drum sounds sounds to me, if, if I heard this on a recording, it wouldn't sound like, a, it, I wouldn't say it was an 18 inch bass drum. It's got so much versatility about it. Um, I've got it tuned quite low at the moment with a little bit of dampening in there, hole in the front head. And to me that, you know, I've used that on, I've used that in the jazz club and I tune it a little bit higher, no dampening in it, and it worked, worked really great in, the, in a jazz setting. But I've used it on some big stages with different sort of artists where it requires more of a backbeat. You know, you, you turn up with an 18 inch bass drum and the sound guys will sometimes look at you and go, that's not really gonna cut through. And then they hear this and they can't believe it. They, they can't believe it. So really pleased with this bass drum. Same with the Tom Toms really. As I say, 14 by 14, 12 by eight, tuned nice and high, feel quite at home in a jazz setting, but drop them down a bit, a little bit of moon gel on, on the Toms. And again, they, they have this kind of I've always liked drummers like Steve Gadd, J.R. Robinson, who have really meaty, chunky tom sounds, and these can, these can do that without any problem at all. Um, in my setup now, I also have a 10 by 7 and a 16 by 16 floor tom in, in the same same colour, same uh, same shells. Yeah, unbelievably versatile. I've been using Echo Drums for just over a year now, I'd say, maybe. 14 months. I'm lucky enough to play a lot of different musical genres. Case in point, I sometimes cover for the Sid Lawrence Orchestra, which is a, a big band, playing kind of music, Glenn Miller, kind of 40s, 50s, 
right up to modern big band styles. Turned up with this very set, actually. The, uh, I think I used the 18, 10, 12 and the 14. Didn't tell anyone they were all metal drums. Had a copper snare, uh, which uh, is a 14 by 5.5. I was using that. And um, played the gig and the baritone sax player, whose uh, name is uh, Jay Craig, who very, very legendary sax player of this country, he played with Buddy Rich between 1983 and 1986. So he knows, he knows drums and he knows drummers. It's, it's interesting because he's, a very, he's very authentic when it comes to, to big band playing. He likes old drums, he likes authentic sounds. And he came straight over to me after the gig and said that you know, he, they'd not seen the kit before. And it's quite a striking kit said he loved the look of the kit, but he said, um, in particular, he said the snare drum, he said it's the, one of the greatest snare drums he's ever s heard on that gig, and he's played with a lot of guys on that gig. He commented on the, the rim click sound, said it sounded just like Irv Cutler, who was uh, Frank Sinatra's drummer for, for 25 years. He said the, the overall sound of the snare drum, he said the kit sounded great, and it was only then that I told him that the whole kit was, was metal, aluminium, bass drum and tom, and the copper snare drum, and he was, he was bowled over by it. Uh, another case in point was I've uh, just come off tour with Leo Sayer and his sound guy, he said it was one of the quickest sound checks he'd ever had to do with drums and I was using no moon gel, no gaffer, kind of almost right out of the box, didn't, di didn't do too much tuning to him. I put, I put my Aquarian heads on, um, which I always use um, in rehearsals and then we got, to the, we got to the gigs and we were doing some pretty big hauls and um, he was bowled over with it and he's worked with many many artists he's been sound guy for for many artists go west um uh, spandau ballet you know a lot of stuff in the 80s where where big, he's, he's very good at making big drums sound massive and um, on that tour the bass drum i used was my apollo aluminium 22 by 20 so quite a deep drum and then the 10 the 12 14 and 16 and every night he said there was there was never any problem no matter how difficult the room was to get a sound, the drums always sound sounded impeccable. And a few people that came and saw me play the gig, friends of mine, uh, musicians and drummers alike, so they were really knocked out with with the sound of the drums. So I wanted a, 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 a drum that I was going to use on the Leo Say at all. I've always been into sort of making things personal. There's so many great drums to choose from out there, all that sound great. But I think the the, the flagship for Echo really is their snare drums. I, I, there's, there's so many, to, every time I come down here, it's like coming into an Aladdin's cave and I want to distract Dave and just load my car up while he's not looking with all the stuff they've got. But the snare drums uh, are, are impeccable. Beautifully made, beautifully crafted, a lot of care and attention goes into them and they sound, you know, unbelievable. Um, and again, versatility is key for me. So I wanted something that, yeah, I was going to use on the Leo Say at all, but also that something that I could use in a variety of different situations as well. Um, and again, we talked about options, we talked about um, the different shells we could have. I wanted something that went with the, with the, white, the white kit and the gold, the gold lugs and the gold rims. Um, and I, I'm a big fan of Steve Gadd and he has a, he has a kind of a black snare, snare drum. So I wanted you know, that kind of color scheme. We looked at a few engravings that, that could person, personalize it around the edge of the drum. And there was never any kind of thought of trying to get me out of the factory quick because they had work to do it was like this this will take as long as it takes and until you're happy we won't we won't proceed and the the, the cups of tea flowed and the biscuits flow I mean that was the only reason I was staying really I like the tea and the biscuits that he offers <laughs> but also we you know we sat we sat down and we um we got we got exactly what I wanted and the well you can see the finished product is incredible it looks beautiful and it it sounds world class you know and again, it's one of those things because with the with the with the uh, the snare drum, with the bass drum, with the toms, because they look striking, they, they automatically open up a dialogue between the people you're working with who've not seen the drums before, and they're straight away asking you about them. Well, we've never seen anything like this before, and you tell them, well, they're custom made, you know, and this this is who they are. It's Echo Custom Drums. They're based in Staley Bridge in Cheshire, my home county, and even then, I I, I like not telling people who've never seen them before that they're all metal. And then I play them and they go, God, those drums sound amazing. I say, yeah, they're, they're all metal shells. And I go, what? And they, and they come over and they tap them. and they. And, but, but to me, I'm, that's not a surprise because that's how I felt when I was first told about metal, the, the concept of metal drums. It was kind of like, hmm, that's not going to sound. Hang on a minute. Um, 
The only thing I can compare it to really is when I um, when I first played a, a Yamaha Phoenix kit. Um, I'm a big fan of Dave Weckl, he's a big Yamaha endorser, and he was sort of spearheading this flagship kit called the Yamaha Phoenix and saying how the the sound levels, he, he's very into his recording and he, he, he noticed that when he mic'd up the, the new Phoenix kit, there were all these frequencies that he'd never been exposed to before and everything was clearer and more dynamic. Um, and when I played one, I, I felt that, you know, I didn't have to work as hard to get a good sound out of it. And that's how these drums are. You know, I, I used to have a DW set up before this one. DW make great drums. I've still got one of their sets. And it's really interesting going back to when this was on the road with Leo Sayer, when this kit was on the tour, tour van. Um, I had a couple of gigs that I had to do and I, I used some of my old wood drums. I think I used a Premier kit on one, great kit. I used my DW and it wasn't the same. It just wasn't the same. This Playing this kit now is like coming home. It's like, it's like ah, this, is, this is what I want my sound to be. And, I do care about my, my sound and I, I like to be individual, I don't want to sound like everyone else and Echo Drums are helping me do that. For me, as long as the quality of the drums remains the same and the sound, then it will be a, a lasting relationship. What, what I would like to do for Echo is try and bring, it, bring the drums to a larger audience and by luckily enough playing with some of the artists that I do, we, we will be hopefully getting all, well, certainly all around the UK, but around the world as well. And if the reaction is the same from people that hear the drums over here abroad, then then that, that can only help sort of bring bring their drums to a, a much larger larger audience. I'd like to, you know, look at... Um, it's something I've never really had the chance to, to experiment with before, co coming somewhere where you can, if you've got a harebrained idea, that might not be conventional, they're happy to try that for you. I think it, more importantly, rather than coming up with an idea just for idea's sake, it's all about making the drums, making the sound exactly what you want. I think that's more important than the visual aspect of it, although the visual aspect is what will get people talking about the drum. And I think coming, luckily, as I say, my parents live 20 miles away, so I'm up here more often than not visiting them. And it's nice to know that I can come down here even if it's just for a cup of tea and a chat about what I'm up to or what I think I need for a certain tour. And I know that it, it's never going to be a, a problem doing that. I just hope that more people sort of take note of, of how good these drums sound. And what I think I would, I would like to see is that uh, a distribution for Echo drums all around the world. And that can be difficult. I think when, as and when I go on tour in other countries, it, at the moment, it's going to be a case of taking maybe a snare drum and maybe some stickers that I can put on a higher kit to get out there. Obviously, if, if you're playing Yamaha drums, if you're playing Sonar drums, they've got distribution all around the world, so you go any any country and you can hire in a Yamaha kit and play those drums. At the moment, with Echo, that's not the case, but that's what I want to see happen because I don't feel I don't feel right not playing Echo drums when, I, when I'm abroad now. You know, if, if they hire in a kit for me and it's you know, it can be a great kit, DW, Yamaha, it's never the same. It's not the same as hearing the sounds I want to hear when I hit, hit the drums. So that's something I'd like to, to do with and for Echo Custom Drums is get them out there to a wider audience. It, it's interesting le learning about the different types of metal and the properties they have. For years I've played wood drums, as most people have. Uh, and you kind of get to learn that birch is quite a, 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 it's got more of an attack, maple is kind of more warmer sound. Thanks to Dave Quinn helping me sort of decipher what properties each metal has, we, uh, I discovered that aluminium, which this kit is aluminium, is a much warmer sound. And I, I've always been a fan, when I was playing wood drums, I was always a fan of maple. So the, the transition to aluminium was kind of the logical, the logical way to go. And from playing my kit, because really I've only gigged this kit uh, in its current form and also 22 by uh, 20 bass drum uh, plus the 16 and the 10. It was interesting comparing it to the brass kit and the uh, Apollo 2 kit. This definitely is a warmer warmer sound with a, with a nice, certainly from the bass drum, a nice bottom end, quite punchy but not intrusive. <laughs>
with the um, the Apollo 2 kit I played uh, earlier on, I played a 22, 22 inch bass drum by, by 18 and well that, that floored me, that did. I don't know what they've done to the tuning of it, it was incredible. It, it sounded all already mic'd up, even though it wasn't mic'd up and EQ'd perfectly. Um, had loads of body to it, loads of moved a lot of air, but with the right amount of attack so that you could hear each bass drum beat really distinctively. It, it, it knocked, knocked me out really. Um, the toms with the, um, the Apollo 2, again, kind of very full of body, but with, with lots of attack. I tried playing a few sort of very open fills, a la kind of Russ Kunkel, J.R. Robinson, that kind of thing. And the drums really sang out, but didn't over resonate. And there was no moon gel on them. And I don't believe there was any dampening in the, snare drum, uh, in the uh, bass drum. They really sang. Yet when I went for some faster kind of stuff, double kick stuff, sort of doubles and singles around the toms at, at kind of a faster pace, every note could be heard, which is rare for me because my technique's terrible. But I could hear everything I was doing. So again, very versatile. I tried a few lighter kind of styles on it, a bit of samba, a bit of jazz. And again, they really responded when I, when I was feathering the bass drum uh, in a jazz kind of setting. Didn't get in the way didn't sort of crowd the, 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 the sonic texture, just added a beautiful little carpet to play over the top of with the top of with the single. to the, the brass kit, well, 18 inch bass drum, 18 by 18 I think, 12 by, uh, 12 by 8, and a 14 by, 14 by 12 I think it was. different sound with that. I was expecting um, a lighter kind of more toppy sound. Again like my kit down here with, with this 18 didn't sound if you closed your eyes you'd say well that's got to be a 20 or a 22. I felt it had a lot more attack to it a lot more front of the note which would sound beautiful in the studio. I've, I've, I've recorded with 18 inch bass drums before wood, wood bass drums and never been that happy with the sound I've got in the studio. This one wouldn't be a problem at all. Again, full of body. This is the thing about the echo drums is that each drum has its own personality. And I felt with this one, with there being more attack on the bass drum, the, the more sort of, you could hear the, the attack of the beater as it struck the drum. It changed the way I played the bass drum. It, it changed the kind of styles of music that I would play on that drum. It's the kind of drum I would use for a maybe a reggae thing or a, or a drum and bass kind of thing because you could play really fast crisp notes and nothing would nothing would be sort of left out it would it would all come through clear with a microphone picking everything up you played mistakes and all um, so I really enjoyed playing that drum the Tom Toms they did ring out a bit more which I really really liked it was a nice contrast to the bass drum I think if I was if I had this kit at home to, to experiment with, I would experiment with different skins, different tuning setups. What I really liked about the, uh, the, the toms, the 12 and the 14 with the, um, with the uh, brass kit, was 
they they had a specific note that you know for playing jazz, which I, I would probably use this kit for quite quite happily. I like the idea of the of the the tom toms having a pitch uh, and something that that resonates, and they resonated really really well without having any annoying overtones, without having any frequencies that made you go, oh no. I always have a, a real problem tuning tuning tom toms. Uh, I'm I'm no scientist when it comes to tuning techniques. Again, I, I put the skin on and I tune the lugs until I get a sound that I like. With the echo drums, I, it's never taken me that long to get that sound. The snare drum as well, beautiful, beautiful snare drum. I, yeah, I was knocked out, knocked out with it.